So I'm going to make this statement. If you want to see God work in your life, doing what he can do in your life, you've got to stop seeing him so small. If you took a plant and you took a pitcher of water and poured on that plant, if you pour it on the leaves, it's not going to do anything because that's not how they absorb the water. But if you pour it down by the root, then it'll go up into the plant. And here's the thing. what You can have even plants like this, and these are, I assume, false plants. Oh, sorry. But you could, you could have different leaves that would be damaged, dying, sickly. Some would be pretty and green. Some might have little spots in them, different things wrong with them, that kind of stuff. You're not going to take the pitcher of water and take the plant that has the spots on it or the damaged under and pour water on it. It'll do nothing. And if you pour it into the root, it goes in and comes out and it goes to every leaf. It doesn't hit just one thing. It doesn't all go to one leaf. It goes to wherever there's a need, but it also goes to actually help the entire plant. It goes to every part. Too many Christians limit God by thinking that if, and believe it or not, some Christians have this many problems, this many diseases, this many sicknesses, this many things going on in their life. I've met them. I know what I'm talking about. And they want me to pray for this thing and then then pray for this thing. Oh, yeah, and then this thing, you need to pray for that. And they think that each thing requires a separate prayer. That's a small God. Now, God is that river of living water that comes pouring out of you, that goes into the root and comes up and take and goes to where it's needed in your body, in your life, and one prayer by faith. Now, what you're expecting is a different prayer for everything. What I'm doing is I'm giving one prayer that hits it all. Why? Because he's that big. Okay? You say, well, but how do I think he's that big? Okay, one more thing. I'm sorry. I meant to be done already. Okay. When I go, well, like we did last night. We opened up last night at the healing service. One of the things we did was I said, how many of you got pain in your body? And many hands went up. And so then we commanded pain, <clears throat> false pain, spirits of infirmity, all these things, tormenting spirits of, of pain, all these things to go. And then we said, now who got healed? And hands went up. If you were here, you saw them. many hands went up. Now, what does that mean? That means one prayer hit every one of them. I didn't pray, bam, pain go, pain go, pain. I didn't do that. We prayed one prayer. We let these rivers flow. So you may have been expecting one thing, but I was expecting all of it to be done. So if we can speak to a crowd of people and have many people healed with one prayer, you don't need 15 prayers for all your problems. Is this making sense to you? See, we only have to pray individually as long as your God is small. He's got to do this, then he's got to do this, then he's got to do that. But whenever God gets big in your eyes, I'll tell you how I learned this. T.L. Osborne. I heard him. I heard him say this. He said he was talking to God. And he said, God, there's too many people here. And God said, how many can I heal at one time? And he said, well, God, you're God. And God said, can I heal 50 at one time? He said, yeah, you're God. Of course you can. He said, can I heal... 500 at one time. He said, well, yeah, you're God. He said, can I heal 5,000 at one time? And he said, I got it. That God could heal the whole crowd with one prayer. And then that's when he started praying one prayer in his mass crusades. Sometimes 20, 30, 50,000 people will be there. 
And he would give one prayer. And he'd say, now, check yourself. And people started throwing away crutches and they would pile up on the sides and thousands of people got healed with one prayer. What, what happened? That T.L. Osborne discovered the secret of how big God was. And when I heard that, guess what? I stole his secret. And I did it in a Russian church where they didn't even speak English and I don't speak Russian. And I gave a command in English and then people got healed. And the many times when I had to go down and pray for them, I didn't even know. I just laid hands, be healed, be healed, be healed. And just laid hands. Didn't even know what I prayed for. Cataracts disappeared, tumors disappeared. It was tremendous. I didn't even know what got healed to the next day when they brought them up and they said it and then they had to interpret it so I could understand it. God got bigger in my eyes. And then I remember with, amen, amen. He can get bigger in your eyes. That's what I'm trying to get him to do right now. I'm trying to get you to do is to see him bigger. He can handle all kinds of stuff all at the same time. And then I heard Wigglesworth. Wigglesworth's son-in-law, James Salter, said, Wigglesworth would open a meeting by telling people, whoever gets up first, whoever stands up first, gets healed of whatever you have. And that's, that could be a pretty scary thing. And James Salter, his son-in-law, said every time he did that, I would just kind of slide down in my chair because he was always sitting on the front row. And he said, because I didn't have Wigglesworth's faith and I was afraid it wasn't going to work. He said, but it always did. Whoever stood up first, and he said, I saw some pitiful cases stand up, but they always got healed because they stood up first. So I hear this story. I just heard it. Actually, I read it. And when I read that story, and I'll show you how faith is contagious. When I read that story, I thought, hmm, I've got the same God Wigglesworth had. He can do the same thing through me that he did through Wigglesworth because the name Wigglesworth doesn't mean anything and the name Blake doesn't mean anything. It's only the name of Jesus that means anything. So if he did it through him, he'll do it through me. If I just put myself in the same position Wigglesworth was in, then God will do the same thing through me he did through Wigglesworth. That's been my thought process all along. And so we started going to meetings, usually in other countries where I started. Why? Because it's easier to fail in another country. Sometimes your reputation doesn't follow you back. <laughs> so I went over to another country. And what did I do? I, I wanted something that people could see and feel right then. I didn't want to do just one thing. But I said, I started with pain. And I said, who's got pain? Because I knew there'd be some. And hundreds of hands went up. Actually, they counted. They said somewhere around 400. And I said, okay. And I'll never forget it. I just did the same thing I'd read about Wigglesworth. And I said, all right. Hands went up. You got pain right now in Jesus' name. And I just went through pain, just what I did last night. And when I got done, I said, pain, you will leave them now. And then I stepped back and I said, all right, who got healed? Just raise your hand. Who got healed? Who, got, who, who? The pain's gone and nobody moved. Nobody. And believe me, 30 seconds in front of a crowd with nobody moving is a long time. And I could feel the sweat. And I'm like, but I'd already... I'd already stepped out there. I couldn't go, <laughs> just, no, just kidding, really. Um, we're, I, I, you know, I, I was just something I was trying. And so, no, you can't do that. It's, you're on the line. And I'm like, come on, whoever, whoever, the pain's gone, check yourself. And finally, there was a hand went up. I'm like, I see that hand. Yes, there's a hand. A hand right there went up. They got, are you here? You got, the pain's gone. Glory to, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I was so happy. One person, and then another hand. I'm like, oh, another, oh, up. Oh, oh. And it was like popcorn. Pop, 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 pop. It was the most amazing thing. And then I'm like, huh, yeah, this works. Yeah. Well, in front of a crowd, it's a terrible time to find out if something works or not, but at least it worked. And so then the next time I got up, guess what? That first time, I was trying. I was acting like Wigglesworth. Next time, I didn't have to act. Why? Because I experienced it. Next time, 
I was just letting Jesus work. And now I've realized how easy it is just to let him work. And so that's why I did that last night. Why? Because it's always good to show people Jesus is here. And I'd, I'd rather give him a chance than me just laying hands on people. Because if I lay hands on everybody, then people go out going, oh, you got to go to Brother Curry's meeting next time if you're sick. You got to get hands on. No, no, no. I showed the people, look, the name of Jesus will set you free. If you still need my hands, okay. But I'd much rather you get it directly from him because that is pure Christianity. Because you are connected to him in the spirit. Amen?